I am here to ensure that your Valentine does not give you the gift that keeps on giving. And that gift is genital herpes. <laughs> so let us get right into this video. I hope it's not too late. I hope you see this before Valentine's night because this is gonna be important. So today we're talking about herpes, but before we get into this video, if this is your first time coming to my channel, please allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Sonita Edward. I'm a medical doctor living in the beautiful island of St. Lucia, which is in the Caribbean. And this is my YouTube channel. You know, I'm just gonna be talking about medicine, vibes, Caribbean vibes, you know, just a vibe and I hope you stick around. I hope you subscribe to my channel because trust me, you're not gonna regret it and you're gonna fall in love with me as I fall in love with you. So let's get into this video. Now, today we're talking about herpes. Now I know herpes is something you've probably heard of before. It's actually very common. According to a study in the United States, about 48% of people actually have HSV type one, which is herpes simplex virus type one. And about 12% of people have HSV two, which is herpes simplex virus type two. So we're gonna talk about what these two different viruses are and dive into it. So herpes is not something that is taboo. It's actually quite um, known and quite common. So yeah, I know you've heard about it before, but today we're gonna be talking about the definition of herpes. We're gonna talk about the pathophysiology of herpes, which basically means what is it, why is it bad, etc. The symptoms of herpes, the causes of herpes, and of course the management and treatment of herpes. So definition, what is herpes? So herpes is actually a viral infection that affects your oral area, which is your mouth and your genital area. So herpes, there are two types of herpes, HSV1, which means herpes simplex virus type one and HSV2, which means herpes simplex virus type two. Now, before long, long, long time ago, HSV1 was associated with your oral area, which is your mouth and HSV2, was associated with your genital area. But because of common practices in the Western world, and I'm talking about oral sex, um, it is actually mixed now. So whereas before HSV-1 was confined to your oral area, right now we're actually seeing HSV-1 in your genital area. And before HSV-2, which was actually confined to your genital area, but now we're seeing HSV-2 actually in your oral area. So it's not black and white anymore. It's more of kind of gray area nowadays. So yeah. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of herpes. I don't know if you know this, but herpes is actually one of the sexually transmitted diseases that can never be cured. Just like HIV, there's no cure for herpes. And while I explain the pathophysiology of herpes, you're gonna understand why, um, why that is. So herpes virus, when you become infected, the virus actually attaches to one of the cells in your body, whether it's your a cell in your oral area or in your genital area. Now your cell has its own DNA, but the virus also has its own DNA. So when the virus attaches to one of your cells, it sends its own viral DNA into your cell and that viral DNA now incorporates into your cellular DNA. So we have your cellular DNA, the viral DNA, and they fuse together to make one DNA or one set of DNA. And as your cell replicates more and more, because you know cells replicate. So as your cell replicates, it also replicates the viral DNA. So that it's not something you can cure because after, you know, years and months, lots of your normal cell will have the viral DNA in them. So it's just something that will keep replicating for as long, for as, long as you live, right? So there's no way you can actually get rid of the viral DNA because it's incorporated into your DNA. Hope you followed that, but yes, that's what happens. So what are the symptoms of 
herpes now i'm gonna add some pictures right now so you can actually see it instead of me describing it you know visual aid is actually very helpful however let me just say this hsv1 which is the herpes virus that associated with your oral or your mouth area actually manifests itself as cold sores now the cold sores come and go depending on your immunity so i don't know if you've seen or maybe you have cold sores but when your immunity goes down whether it's because you you know you get the flu or whatever but if you have um, a low immunity then the viral um, symptoms actually manifest itself as cold sores and of course when you build up your immunity the cold sores disappear so yes cold sores actually help you simplex virus type 1 and of course in your genital area which is something you won't see on many people unless you're intimate with them but when of course when they have a low immunity as well then the symptoms will flare up and you would see the sores or the symptoms on the genital area now why do the symptoms come and go well if the virus is in the person but it's dormant then there will be no symptoms but that doesn't mean that the person is cured all that means is the virus is now dormant in that individual so there will be no symptoms now i know you're probably wondering can i get infected with herpes if the person who I'm having sexual relations with, if their symptoms are dormant? Actually, unfortunately, yes, you can. I'm sorry to say this. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but yes. However, the chances of you getting herpes from someone whose symptoms are not visible and whose virus is dormant is a lot less than getting it from someone whose symptoms are visible and whose infection is active. So guys, yes, you can get it, but it's a lot less, right? So what are the causes of herpes or how do you get herpes? Well, simple. Herpes is transmitted through sexual practices, whether it be oral sex, um, sexual intercourse, coitus. That's how you get herpes. However, herpes can also spread through simply touching someone who has an active infection for example let's say i had an active infection and i had cold sores all around my mouth if someone was to come to me and touch the cold sores and then immediately touch their mouth or touch their eyes or touch any area on their body where there's mucous membranes then yes they can transfer herpes from me to themselves not through sexual intercourse but by simply touching and carrying the infection and there's actually a case on um a tv show i think it was house house md the tv show that um, one of the patients actually transmitted herpes from himself to another patient by simply scratching the herpes and touching the person on their mouth area so yes you can get herpes not only through sexual practices but if someone has an active infection and they touch it and they touch you Yes, you can get herpes, so be careful not to transmit the disease. Now, management. How do you manage herpes? How do you treat herpes? Like I said, there is no cure for herpes, unfortunately. However, doctors, we try to control the symptoms of herpes. So the doctor will prescribe a drug known as a cyclovir, and there are other forms of the drug called valcyclovir, gungcyclovir. Basically, any drug that ends with cyclovir, it has been shown to be very good and very um, potent against the herpes infection. Like I said, it won't cure herpes. However, it will control the symptoms so you won't get as many flare-ups. Or if you have a, uh, an active flare-up currently, if you take that drug, it's gonna, you know, control your active symptoms. So no cure for herpes however you can control the symptoms now i hope this was helpful and i hope you get to see this before your valentine's night festivities and i hope you guys please i hope you guys are safe out there and you know just try to minimize your chances of herpes and any other std but guys have a happy valentine's day and until next time take care of yourself and each other and happy valentine's day <laughs> i hope i didn't um kill your valentine's day plans that was not my intention <laughs>
all right y'all bye and i'll see you guys in the next video bye